Hello everybody and welcome to another Figurehead Reviews video and today we are going to be taking a look at the Marvel Legends Spider-Man Noir from the Lizard Build-A-Figure Wave. Here we have Spider-Man Noir in the front window box displayed with his Build-A-Figure piece. At the top we do have the Spider-Man logo as well as the name down there on the side. We get a little profile shot here of Spider-Man Noir, same on both sides. And then we get a product shot as well as all the other figures needed in this wave to complete the Lizard Build-A-Figure. And at the top we have the read-up. Reluctant hero Spider-Man Noir battles bad guys and mob bosses alike in 1930s New York City. And down here at the bottom we do have the UPC code so you can check with your local retailer to see if they have this in stock. But enough about that, let's get this open and take a look at Spider-Man Noir. And here is Spider-Man Noir outside of the packaging. And it's a reused body mold, but... Uh, it's a really cool that we get just this continuation of the Spider-Verse theme and that we're seeing some of these other characters. You know, Spider-Man 2099 and Spider-Man Noir seem to be some of the standout of the, uh, the Spider-Verse stuff. Uh, but really cool figure, again, even though it is a used, uh, reused body mold. And I'll kind of show you, too, some people have been updating some older figures uh, that uh, could have used an update. For example, the comic book Red Skull had a very similar uh, style here with the jacket and everything, but this updated body mold makes him look a little bit better. I've seen people do it with Nick Fury, uh, but either way, cool figure. He does come with those two pistols, which we'll take a look at, and then he does have, of course, his build-a-figure piece, which we're not going to look at now. We're going to save that for when we put the lizard together. So let's start first by taking a look at those pistols, and then we're going to get a closer look at Spider-Man Noir. And looking real quick here at the weapons that we get with Spider-Man Noir. And they're a little too sci-fi for me. Uh, I would have preferred to see a realistic gun. Um, you know, these sci-fi guns just, they don't work for what he's supposed to be, in my opinion. And not only that, but if you look at his trigger finger, it doesn't quite go into uh, the trigger slot very easily, just because of how it's... Uh, a very small trigger uh, the finger literally won't fit in there so yeah kind of a disappointment there um, like I said uh, it's supposed to be 1930s character so giving him these sci-fi weapons just doesn't make sense to me but oh well let's go ahead now though and get a better look at spider noir or spider-man noir so getting up close here to spider-man noir and we can see a pretty cool head sculpt you know it looks like something that would be of the uh, 1930s era where you know you got heavy stitching, goggles, just kind of a cloth look to it. And uh, yeah, I think that came out pretty good. The paint on the eyes came out yeah, pretty well done. So yeah, overall, it's a, a cool look, cool design, and uh, I think it works well with it. Uh, going down the rest of the figure so we can see this is the same body mold that you get with, uh, it was used on the AIM Scientist, it's used with Ghost Rider, uh, it's been used on a couple of figures now, you have sort of this um, pattern there with the buttons. Uh, one difference, I'm not sure how many of them have a uh, turtleneck, so he does have a turtleneck with a high collar going, and he's using this jacket that we've seen for a long time, and I wish I could remember who the original character was that had that jacket. Um, but uh, I, I can't, unfortunately, escapes me. I actually don't have him, so. Um, but not much to it. It is uh, got the split there, and it is a moldable material, uh, or pliable material. And actually, it does come off. What I found the easiest way is if you put the arms back like that, and then basically just push, and let's see if I can do this on screen here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so. There you go. So you can go jacket off if you wanted to. And uh, I'm going to regret saying that. You can take the coat off if you want to. Uh, and you can see the rest of the sculpt. The only thing is the shoulders look a little out of place. Uh, and I think the same thing on the Ghost Rider figure. They look a little um, broad, like a, there's shoulder pads there. But it works. And he does have a holster that was hidden under the jacket that can uh, house one of those pistols. I forgot to mention that earlier, but it can house one of those pistols if you wanted to. Uh, and then looking down at the rest of the figure, uh, you have the same fabric looking mold and some boots on there. Uh, so there's not a ton of paint. The only paint that you have, you have his belt buckle, which actually came out good. And then you have the eyes. 
uh, and then uh, just the lighter material there on the mouthpiece. So it's a very dark character uh, that didn't need a whole lot of paint. But uh, yeah, and then like I said, you can take his coat on and off with relative ease. So that's pretty cool. But let's go ahead now and take a look at scale and articulation. And looking at the scale here on Spider-Man Noir, we can see he's coming in at just under six and a half inches tall. Taking a look at his head, he does have full rotation. However, he is going to hit the collar of the jacket there. So you're going to have a hard time getting it around, but of course there's really not much need to go beyond, you know, normal range of human, uh, you know, rotation. Uh, this looks like, boy, is this just a tough, there we go. It was just a tough joint. He can bury his head down pretty far and he can look back pretty far too, but it is getting in the way there of that collar again. He's got arms that don't come up very far. Uh, unfortunately, this shoulder piece does get stuck. Even if you try to bring it under, uh, you don't get a whole lot out of those shoulders. You do, of course, get full rotation, a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, then rotation and a hinge there at the wrist. He does have an ab crunch, which can go pretty far forward and that jacket will flare back. And it can go backwards, but you're gonna have a hard time keeping it backwards because the jacket is gonna pull on that. Then you do have waist rotation, legs that can go apart pretty far, but if they are under the jacket, uh, they are going to get stopped by that. Can kick forward pretty far, but again, the jacket is going to stop that, so it doesn't go back very far. And even without the jacket, they don't go back too far. He does have a upper thigh cut, double jointed knee. He does not have a boot cut, but he does have a hinge and ankle pivot. And real quick, I did just want to show what the iron skull head looks like on the Spider-Man Noir body. And uh, I gotta say, this is more than likely going to be a, a cause for me getting an additional Spider-Man Noir. Uh, I don't have that Mandroid Wave Red Skull. So with this, you get a very respectable comic book version of Red Skull. And for a real quick comparison, if any of you guys ever played the old Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions game, here we have now the complete ensemble. You have uh, you could call it the Amazing Spider-Man there with the Pizza Spideys, the original Spider-Man 2099 costume. We'll call it the Ultimate Spider-Man there in the symbiote suit. And of course, now you have Spider-Man Noir. And here we have the entire wave displayed together along with the Lizard Build-A-Figure. We have Lasher, Spider-Man Noir, Gwenpool, Mysterio, the Lizard Build-A-Figure, Spider-Woman, Spider-Punk, and Prowler. Very good looking wave. And that is it for this review, everyone. And, you know, one of my biggest concerns for this figure was going to be uh, the ability to put him in some dynamic posing. And my problem was I was thinking more of a Spider-Man character, you know, the uh, displays of acrobatics and stuff. But this character, I forget, is just more about kind of brawling and uh, certainly the guns that come into play. And, you know, this pose here that I got him in and then that running pose that I had him in uh, when I first had him on the turntable, you know, really cool looking poses and that jacket really adds a uh, sense of flair and uh, drama to the the action so I've actually been pretty pleased with some of the poses that I can get him in uh, as far as a character uh, pretty big character and as far as the spider-verse goes uh, he's gotten more and more popular as time has gone on so for that fact alone if you are a spider-man or spider-verse collector he's you got to have him he's an essential spider-verse uh, figure so definitely got to pick him up um, but with that being said, I do recommend the figure. He's worth getting. Uh, and that is it for the review, everyone. So make sure to hit that like button down below if you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe for more content just like this. And aside from that, thanks for watching the video and have a great day.